Hello everyone, Guy in the Shell here. We are going to solve the staple AES challenge from the Offshift CTF that I did over the past few days. So this is a crypto CTF. We are given a server that answers with some cryptic string of characters that looks a lot like hexadecimal. So first thing we see, we take note, uh, this is a, a string that changes and it's always 96 characters in hexadecimal, which is 48 characters in, uh, in uh, ASCII. So our flag is likely 48 characters. Okay, we are given the code also that generates that. So let's open it. There is quite a bit of boilerplate uh, that I'm not gonna go into. Uh, suffice to say that they they declare the IV and the key parameters as global. They open the flag. Uh, they have some XOR function. Uh, I'll come back to that. But here, so here is the server. What does it do? It first check that the flag length modulo 16 is one. So that's interesting. The flag length modulo 16 is one. Okay. Then it shuffles the flag. We'll see what that does. Then it encrypts the shuffled a uh, flag, and then it sends the axlified values. So that's what we saw. We saw a string of characters that are uh, representing a hex byte value. Okay, so what does shuffle does? First shuffle is padding the flag, and then it's cutting the flag into chunks of 16 characters. And I guess that's why we have a modulo 16 here. So, uh, and that's why it's padding to 16. So uh, with our flag that our response from the server that is 48 characters well we get a flag that has three chunks right with the last chunk being actually just one character plus some padding that's what this says and then it shuffles the the part so all those three chunks are given in random order okay now let's go to the encrypt so encrypt it's interesting so it's creating the cipher with the key and then it's encrypting current and current is iv it's a global constant and then uh, for the first block and then on the second block it's gonna encrypt the encrypted current because it's self-assigning there so we have for the first block we uh we have encrypted iv the second block we have encrypted encrypted iv and the third block we have encrypted 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 iv okay and then it's building a uh, an array here where it's appending the encrypted value here with block which is coming from our flag so actually our flag is never encrypted it is xored with with encrypted values and this encrypted value is constant this iv that we saw at the top of the file it's a constant so each run of the server we are going to get the same iv Okay, so that's very interesting. Okay, maybe one thing I want to check is what this pad function does. Uh, I did not know it. So let me just copy that. And then I'm gonna open Python. I'm gonna copy that. And so let's do pad of ABC 16. Oops, I need to pass a byte string. Okay, so it's padding it with some value. Okay, let's do, and to get 16 characters. Oh, that's interesting. The value is not the same anymore. Hmm, so what does that mean? E. So what we can see is that the value it's appending here is the number of padding, it's, uh, padding bytes it's adding. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which is 0B in hexadecimal. So because it has to add 11 bytes, it's using it's each byte that it's it's using for the padding is equal to 11 and so in our case we saw that the flag length modulo 16 was equal to 1 and that means that if you pad it to 16 you are adding 15 bytes and so what you are doing is something like that so when you are padding your flag at the end you are getting 15 bytes of value 0x0f and that's very important Okay, because that's going to be useful. So now I think we have enough strategy, enough information story to build up a strategy. So let's talk about that. 
So the first thing to realize is that our flag has a known shape. It starts with flag and it ends with uh, a curly brace and some padding. So we know the entirety of the last chunk of the flag and we know a bit of the first chunk of the flag. Then we can superimpose our encrypted values that are XOR with the flag. But as I told you, on every server run, server request, the flag is shuffled. So the encrypted IV values, they are actually XOR with parts of the flag in many different orders. And so you can get all sorts of combinations. It means also that at some point, your first encrypted IV value will have been encrypted, will have been XORed with every single possible chunk of the flag. But wait, we do know some parts of the flags. So that means that we could take this part of the flag and apply it to all those three possibilities and XOR it. And what that means is that we would get two times some garbage, but one time we would actually XOR the end of the flag with the end of the flag with ANK, so that would make ANK appear. So we have three chunks of flags and we have three possible ANK, one of them we know is good, so we could just uh, apply them uh, to each other and it just nine values total, so it would work, but we can use some more information. We have a second part of the flag that we know partially so we can apply the same logic and it makes appear again twice some garbage but the third time it makes appear the start of ANK and with the start of ANK in one of those group and the end of ANK in the other group we certainly can identify ANK very easily and then we will be able to apply it to every member of the group and make appear each uh, chunk of the flag. Let's now put our strategy in practice. So, first we'll try to retrieve those values. So what I'm doing here is that I'm creating uh, sets that are going to retrieve the first chunk, all the three values for the first chunk, all the three values for the second chunk, and all the three values for the third chunk. We don't ever work only on the first one, but I'm retrieving everything. So I'm just looping forever, opening the socket, and then I'm trying to uh, interrogate the socket. I'm unexplifying the value so that I get uh, this character string. I get back some bytes. Then I'm splitting my string into chunks of 16 length. So those three chunks. And then I loop over them and I add them to this set of unique values. And if I have found all three sets, all three values for each of the three position, I just break. And on each loop, I just wait a bit so that I don't uh, hammer the server too strongly. So let's do that. And we get a set of three values for the first chunk. And that's the only one we are going to play with. So we are going to also define this bytexor uh, function that was provided. We use it. And then let's use our crib one. So we said we have one crib that is the start of the flag and we have a second crib that is the end of the flag. Now what we want to do is apply those to uh, the, the first three chunks. So for each value in the set of the first three chunks, possible three chunks, we apply crib two, crib one, and then crib two. And here we go. And what we see is that this short crib, this short value is the start of this long value. So this is a possible candidate. And then, unfortunately, or maybe it was crafted like that, this short value is also the start of this short value. So we have actually two valid candidates for what ANK is. So let's call ANK C1 and say, so the first one is A, like that. And then I want to apply it to my three uh, different uh, first chunks. And I get my flag start with some new characters that I did not know about. I get my flag end, but oh, this does not look good. So maybe this was the other one. So let's take uh, C1 to be the one that starts, that starts with Z. And now if we do our loop again, and here it is, the start 
the middle and the end. And that's how you solve it. Thank you for following me. Bye-bye.